Good morning, folks. So this is um, a chance to uh, do a kind of mobilising practice for your body. Um, obviously, doing the classes online or in person is really great uh, for for lots of reasons. You know, just to be in that group together, to be um, you know, practicing and 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 sharing that space or sharing that time or sharing that energy together is really useful. But the beauty of doing it like this, where you can just follow along um, with a video, you can kind of go off piste a little bit if you want, and you can explore your own movement. You can do that in my classes anyway, but you can do it much more with this. You can pause the video or stop the video. Um, and just explore, you know, just see what's happening when I when I move this way. What's happening when I go that way? What? How do I, how do I ease more movement into this part of my body? So maybe I say do this, and you're like, actually, that doesn't feel that great. And maybe if I do this, it feels great. Okay. So the, there's infinite possibilities available to your body in terms of movement. Um. So you take this time just to. For sure, be be guided, but almost like a like a conductor. You know, if you're if you're a violin player, you know you're gonna you're gonna play that instrument very different to somebody who plays um, a woodwind instrument. You know, like so, it's it's a chance for you, which again is going to be very different from a double bass, and, and you have to decide what kind of instrument your body is, what kind of uh, playing it needs and uh, what kind of attention it needs. So take your time, let uh, your body unfold, unravel, and take yeah, just just treat yourself kindly over the next thirty minutes or so. Okay, so let's begin like we we normally do. Um, you know, I like to sit in a cushion and. Um, Start lying on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat, okay? And again, obviously everything is optional. So even this is optional. But if it's helpful to place one hand in your belly, one hand in your chest, allow yourself to do that. And just settle into your breath. Smooth inhales, smooth exhales. And maybe you lift and lay certain parts just to make it a little more comfortable, a bit more grounded. Feel the belly rise and fall with the breath. Feel the chest rise and fall with the breath. Place the hands by your sides. And on the next inhale, let the arms come up over your head towards the floor behind. And as you exhale, let them come back down by your sides. Again, on the next inhale, try and be a little bit more aware of every moment of the movement. If there's any resistance anywhere, then notice that. If there's anywhere where there's a lot of ease and comfort, then notice that. When your arms come to rest, start to lift and lay the feet, spread out the toes, make a connection to your feet. 
And when you're ready, you can start to press the feet into the floor. Now try and not push the feet away. So if you push the feet away, and you can even try that, you'll load the shoulders with the weight of your body, the shoulders and the neck. Okay, and, and it's fairly uncomfortable. So if that's your, the way you're doing it, try and bring the feet maybe a little closer to the hips and press them down. So almost like you're, you're drawing your pelvis towards the back of your knees and actually you're taking the weight out of your shoulders. So play with us a little bit, come up and down a couple of times. Notice what happens if you push the feet away. You immediately load the shoulders and the upper back and the, and the head, okay? But if you ground the feet down and really push the ground away, and the hips slowly come up and actually just lighten the weight through the shoulders and the legs, which are hugely muscular, hopefully can take the responsibility for this. So just notice that, play with that a little bit. And then we can add the arms back into. So inhale, the arms go up and over, the hips rise. And as you exhale, the arms come back down. The hips come back down. You can do this a couple of times. More if you want to, or less if you want to. When your hips come to rest, your arms come to rest. Let's come into Apanasana where the feet come off the floor, our hands come round your knees, and let's shift around a little bit here. I'm going to spend quite a lot of time just mobilizing the legs and the hips just around their body from this position and eventually the lower back too, okay? So keep both hands around the left knee, let the right foot rest on the floor. Now the right foot can be flat or the right leg can be straight, okay? Whatever feels comfortable for you. But we're gonna start with this left foot by spreading and opening the toes. Okay, so spread and open them and then squeeze them together. And when you squeeze them, you might feel a little bit of cramp in the center of your foot if you're fairly strong with that movement. But spread and open them and squeeze them, spread and open them and squeeze them. Try and move each toe and feel the big toe, feel the little toe, feel the three middle toes. And then start to circle the foot around. So try and draw a circle with your big toe. And you can reverse those circles. And when you've got time, you can go a little off piste and start to make other shapes with your big toe, maybe writing letters of the alphabet, maybe just drawing infinity symbols, maybe any movement, maybe drawing squares, whatever feels interesting for your body and also a little unusual for your body, just trying to expand your movement repertoire. And then relax the foot. Let's start to take the movement into the hip by circling the knee around. So circling as widely as you can with both hands and then take the right hand away out to the side and circle just with the left hand. Try and make these circles very relaxed, but obviously um, there's a little movement in here. The leg is still fairly passive as the hand helps the movement. And now we can take the left hand away and actually just make the movement with the leg actively. So making these circles, 
and you can get as into this as you want to. Okay. And then bring the left knee to your chest. Take both hands around the left knee. Take an inhale. Exhale the nose towards the knee. Let the head come back down. Place the hands behind the left thigh now. Start creating those same circles through the foot. And as you create these circles, gradually let the foot open up towards the area above your head. Okay. And we now have the chance to kind of see your foot and watch the movement. And you can lift your head up and give yourself some massage at the back of the left calf. So maybe pressing the fingers in, squeezing, and then squeezing with the fingers interlaced, squeezing the back of the thigh. You can keep the, the knee nice and soft so that the muscles are softer. Good. Let your head come back down. Take both hands around the the left knee again, hug it towards you. From here, you can straighten the right leg, take the right hand around the left knee, take the left arm out to the side, and use the right hand to draw the left knee across your body. So the shoulders stay down, but we send the knee in the opposite direction, and we can even turn to look in the opposite direction. The breath should be smooth, especially through all these fairly gentle movements. Bring the knee back across and hug it towards you. Let the left leg come to rest, either with the foot flat or the, the leg straight. And then bring the right knee up towards you and just see how the right leg is feeling this morning. Okay, spread and open the toes and then squeeze them. Spread and open them and squeeze them. Try and move them individually and then create some circles with the big toe. Start to go in the opposite direction or make more random movement with the foot. Again, maybe squares, maybe a rectangle, maybe yeah, any, any number of shapes that you can make. Okay. A star. Okay. And once you've moved the foot, let it relax. And take this relaxation up through the leg as you start to circle the knee around. And like on the other side, keep the leg fairly passive to begin with. Noticing all the time, what's, what does this feel like? What might make this movement a bit easier and free me up? Where's the resistance coming from? You can take the left hand out to the side. Maybe one side feels different from the opposite side. So you've got one good side and one great side. Okay. We don't have a bad side. And from there, you can start to make the circles with the leg on its own. And you might notice some difference. So for me, like I definitely notice some difference between the right side and the left side. And then bring both hands around the right knee. Take an inhale. And exhale the nose in the direction of the knee. Let the head come back down. Clasp your hands behind your right thigh. Circle the foot. And again, slowly let that foot rise. You can bring the head away from the floor and start to massage the back of the calves here. 
You're just feeling any soft tissue and just giving it a little squeeze, like you'd squeeze a sponge. And you can do the same with the thigh and the back of the thigh, interlacing the fingers and giving them a little squeeze. Bring the knee back towards your chest, okay? Keep the left hand around the right knee, take the right arm out to the side. Use the left hand to draw that right knee across your body. Gently let it open up. You can turn the head towards the opposite side. Keep the shoulders relaxed, but let the, the whole of your body turn in this direction. And bring the knees back across and hug them towards you. So most of the practice we've done this morning, apart from maybe pushing your feet into the floor and lifting your hips up, you can do lying in your bed. You can do underneath your duvet if it's a, a winter's day. Just mobilizing your body. You know, like motion is lotion is a phrase that we use all the time. Any movement is almost always good for your body, okay? Slowly roll out towards whichever side feels comfortable for you, and let's come up to a seated position. So you notice that I'm sitting with my legs crossed, which is fine, if you can sit like this, that's great. But if you are sitting with your legs crossed, probably you cross your legs the same way every time, so let's uncross them and cross them the opposite way. One of the things that we're trying to do in yoga is notice our patterns, notice our habitual way of being in our movement, but mostly in our, in our thoughts, you know, our way, the way that our mind is kind of maybe grabs onto something and runs with it and runs with it and runs with it. And, and it, there's, in the practice of yoga, there's, a, there's the opportunity for freedom from that, okay? If we, if we use the tools of the practice. Okay, so let's add some movement back into uh, our, our session and uh, think about our spine and all the directions that the spine can move. So let's bring the fingers forward, okay? And just walk them away from the legs. Now that might mean just getting the fingertips to the hands. It might mean for some people getting the elbows on the floor. For me, it's quite early in the morning, so I wouldn't get my head too close to the floor. It would be close-ish. And then let the head come up. But let's see if we can free up even that movement just with some movements in other directions, okay? So take the hands behind and lift and open up the chest. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Let the chest rise towards the ceiling. Hmm. Bring the left hand forward, place it on your knee, and gently turn towards that side. Release that, and turn to the opposite side. One more time, either side. Fairly, obviously, it's a relatively sim simple movement, but it may be a movement that you don't make as often as you think. Even cars. You don't really turn to reverse park your car anymore. You, you look at a screen or you have parking sensors. So turning is a, is a useful movement for the human body, okay? A necessary movement, okay? Take the right hand up, reach towards the ceiling, okay? Take an inhale and exhale, walk this other hand away. Maybe let the elbow come a little closer to the floor and just reach across. Imagine there's something just slightly out of your reach and you're, you're trying to get your fingertips towards it. Inhale, the lower hand up. Exhale, sliding this hand away a little. Maybe the elbow comes a little closer to the floor. And again, a couple of times with this movement. Inhale up and exhale. Inhale up and exhale. Gradually coming back up, you can walk the fingers away again. 
and see if this movement has freed up a little bit. So the first time I did this, the head came closest to the floor, but it's much easier after just making those rotations and side bendings to get a little closer to the floor, especially if I take my time with the rotations and the side bend and I don't force any of it. I'm not trying to, you know, break anything or fight with anything. I'm trying to just like, okay, I can go a little this way, a little this way, a little this way, a little this way, and hopefully things free up. Okay, so let's come to all fours. So our hands can rest slightly in front of our shoulders, our knees underneath our hips, and gently let the weight go forwards and backwards. Okay. So everything is about mobility and ease in this session. Nothing is to feel forced, maybe coming forward in cat posture and coming back in cow posture. Forward in cat, back in cow, and maybe forward in cow, back in cat. Almost like a wave rolling into the shore and coming away from the shore. When you come forward the next time, let's walk the hands off to the left hand side. Okay, so we get another chance to do some side bending, but also float the hips back to the heels. And see how that feels. Imagine the hands have been kind of stuck to the floor and you're trying to get your hips away from them. And then you can try the opposite side. Again, float the hips back towards the heels. One more time, either side. So walking the hands across. Maybe finding somewhere different to place the hands and shifting the hips back towards the heels. And last time on the opposite side. Coming back to the center. Let's walk the hands back towards the knees and see how comfortable we feel in the kneeling position. Again, this is a, a movement, a posture that's useful um, for the human body to be able to cope with. If you've got issues with your knees, then you know, seek some seek some advice before making any major movements. But this is fairly comfortable once we work through any resistance that's that stopping us do this. Okay. Let's bring the right foot forward. Find a place in front and lean in. And all we're going to do is shift the foot around our mat if we're using a mat or our rug if we're using a rug. And just find places and just notice the different feelings around your legs, both the back leg and the front leg, when you place the foot around the room. Okay. Now it's nice to add a little balance to this movement if we bring the right foot up off the floor. And you might find that quite tricky. You might find the fingers coming down or the toes coming down. Just play with it. It's not, don't take yourself too seriously. Okay. And then let the right foot land, okay? And he'll sweep the arms up over your head. Open up through the chest. And as you exhale, place the hands either side of the right foot. Let's come forward again, inhale. Lift the arms up, open up through your chest. And exhale, let the hands come back down. Okay, last time. Inhale, lift and open them up. This time, we're going to bring the hands inside the right foot and just move around a little bit here. Let's walk the hands back towards the left knee. So again, we're making this side bending movement. Now, if you're comfortable, bend the left knee. Take hold of the left foot with your left hand. Now, you can do this lying on your side if that's more achievable for you to just lie on your side and hold the left foot in your left hand. And if it's comfortable, we bring this hand forward again. Making any small adjustments 
taking the hips a little bit forward. If you're comfortable there, bringing the right hand on the right knee. And it's nice to rotate your body forward here. And you feel, without doing anything with your hand, you feel more opening down the front of the thigh. And if you're still comfortable, you can take the other hand behind and hold the foot too. And then movement here is nice to make us to lift the chest up a little bit. So all these subtle movements are opening the front of the quads just in a little different way with every subtle movement. We can gently release that, bring the hands back down, step back with the right foot, okay? Let's tuck underneath the toes, hips back towards the heels and kind of almost unfold into downward dog. So just let the hips open up, the knees open up and gently pedal your down dog. Let both knees come back on the floor. Walk the hands back to your knees again and let your hips rest on your heels. Okay, so other side and then we're done for, for today, okay? So let's lift the hips up, send the right foot forward and gently lean in. Oh, we've done the right side. Let's do the other side, okay? <laughs> so the left foot forward and lean in. And take it out to the side. Just seeing how things are feeling wherever you place this foot. So it can be quite close in, okay? And you might feel that down the back of the lower leg. It can be quite far in front, okay? And you might feel it more in the back leg. But just explore this movement for you this morning. Okay, let's open up through the arms. Inhale, take the arms wide and open, lift in the chest. Exhale, let the hands come back. Twice more. Inhale. Let the arms open up, chest fall back. Exhale, let the hands come down. Okay. One last time. Inhale, let the arms open up, chest open up. This time bring the hands inside the left foot. And we're gonna to walk towards the right knee. Bend the right knee, hold the right foot with the right hand if that's available to us. Start to shift the left hand forward. See how that feels. Okay. If it's comfortable, bring the left hand on the left knee. Okay. And turn your chest to face the front and you'll feel more down the front of the thigh. And then if you want to, you can take the left hand back, both hands can hold the foot and lift up through the chest a little bit. Good. Gently release that, bring the hands back on the floor, take the knee back, take both knees wide, touch your big toes together, hips toward your heels, elbows towards the floor, head resting on the floor, let your whole body rest and relax. Take as long as you need here. Lift the head up, lift the elbows. Walk the hands back towards you. Let's come to a seated position. So the rest of the practice, um, I'm going to hand over to you. So you can, if there's more movements, if you were moving along through the practice and discovering that you need to move in a few other ways and, and there's still some resistance that you want to try and ease off, then take some time to do that. If you're ready for Shavasana, come to Shavasana, okay? If you can and you have time at the end of Shavasana, take a cushion, place it underneath your hips or sit against your couch or sit against the wall. 
and just spend some time sitting and, and just taking a few breaths. That can be three breaths, it can be 12 breaths, it can be 108 breaths, it can be as many as you, as you have time for. But just take some time to sit and sit in the stillness and quietness and calmness that you've cultivated through your practice. Okay, so I really encourage you to take the next 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, and if you have longer, then, then take that time, okay? What else are you gonna do, you know? <laughs> it was probably not that important. So let yourself sit and rest in this position. What, once you've had Shavasana, okay? Bring the, the, at the very end of it, thank yourself for your practice, okay? Your family will thank you for your practice if it keeps you steadier and stiller. So bring the fingertips together, base the palms together. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy Shavasana. <laughs>